hello. So you can make sure you double check the answers in the PEF uh, 8 through 12 purple folder um, for last night's homework or ask me in class if you have questions. So we are going to be on page 157, page 157. Skip over these a little bit. All right, so we've solved this equation where we factor. And we have solved this knowing this is difference of two squares. But this next one, this is a perfect square. This is a subtraction sign. 20 is not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the 20 over. I'm going to add 20 to both sides. So I'm going to get x squared is equal to 20. To undo x squared to make it just x, I have to take the square root of both sides. So this is going to give me x equals, don't forget the plus or minus component, root 20. Now, you need to be able to break root 20 down. You have to realize root 20 breaks down to 4 and 5. And I'm using 4 and 5 and not 2 and 10 because 4 is a perfect square. So the square root of 4 is going to give me 2. So my answer to this is plus or minus 2 square root 5. This means my answer is positive 2 square root 5 and negative 2 square root 5. There's two answers. Okay, so I want to make it equal to 0. I don't have any x term, I just have x squared. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. So I'm getting x by itself, and I get x equals 4. I take the square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus minus. Square root of 4 is 2, so my answer is positive 2 and negative 2. So this, these tell you, this tells you solve to get x squared alone, find the square root, simplify the answers. Remember there are two answers, so don't forget the plus minus. That's an important part of this process. So if you're putting a square root sign, remember there's going to be two answers. That's where we get the positive and the negative answer. So if I had something like x squared and I need to solve it by taking the square root of both sides, that's just some number. Realize I have to have a positive and negative that I put with it. So let's take a look at this one. I'm going to add 32 to both sides. Those cancel out, so I have 2x squared is equal to 32. Divide each side by 2, so x squared equals 16. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Don't forget positive negative. Uh, is there a square root of 16 that works? Yeah, the answer is 4. So my answer is positive 4, and my answer is also negative 4. So let's take a look on this one. I'm going to add 12 to both sides. So I get 3x squared is equal to 24. Divide each side by 3. Those cancel out. So x squared, 24 over 3, comes out to 8. Now I have to take the square root of both sides. Don't forget to put the positive negative. So I get x equals, because square root of x squared is x, positive or negative square root 8. You have to realize 8 breaks down to 4 times 2, where that's your perfect square. So I'm going to get 2 square root 2, because the square root of 4 is 2. So my answer is positive or negative 2 square root 2. That's my reduced answer. We try this next one. I'm going to add 20 to both sides. Those cancel, so I get 2x squared is equal to 40. Divide each side by 2. Those cancel. Reduce 20 or 40 over 2, which is 20. Take the square root of both sides. Don't forget to put the plus minus. So square root of x squared is x equals positive minus 20. Realize 20 breaks down to 4 times 5. I'm not using 2 and 10 because I wanted a perfect square. So square root of 4 is 2, so I get 2 square root 5. So my answer is positive negative 2 square root 5, or positive 2 root 5 and negative 2 square root 5. Problem number 5, I'm going to subtract 27 from both sides. So I get 3x squared equals negative 27. Divide each side by 3, those cancel. So I'm going to get x squared equals negative 9. If I take the square root of both sides, I'm going to show you something that's going to take place. Don't forget the plus minus. Okay, 
So if I didn't have this negative sign here, my answer would be 3. So plus or minus 3. But now, remember, anytime I take the square root of a negative, we were saying it's no real solution. Well, now it's going to represent the letter I. I does not stand for a variable. I means that you had a square root of a negative 1 in this case. How that's a negative 1 is if I took square root negative 9, that's the same thing as root 9 times negative 1, which is the same thing as square root 9 times square root negative 1. This is where I comes in. So plus or minus 3I is our answer. I stands for the imaginary numbers. Okay, your homework for this weekend will be page 159 and 160. And I would like you to go ahead and work on 1 through 18. Have a nice day. Make sure you ask me if you have any questions. I'm happy to go over those. Bye.